Hi, in this video we're going to show you a way to have more shortcuts on your home page in your web browser. So if you use Google Chrome, you notice that you can only have 10 shortcuts here. You can see I don't have any way to add another one, unless of course I come to one of them, remove it, and now I have an option to add a new one. And if you don't have this turned on altogether, you could come to Customize Chrome, go to Shortcuts and make sure this is turned on. All right, so let's say you want a way to use more than 10 shortcuts. So you can't do this uh, within Chrome itself or from any Google settings. So we're going to have to use some extensions to do so. So we're going to show you three different ones, and then you can see which one you like. All right, so let's start with Speed Dial here. So this will work for Chrome. should work for Edge as well. Actually, all of these should work for Edge. So we'll click on Add to Chrome. You have to accept the permissions here that it's requesting. Click on Add. And it kind of gives you a little walkthrough here. All right, then we have our main setting here. So it has some defaults that, of course, you could come in here and change if you want or delete. So let's say we want to add a new one. Just click on the plus, put in the URL. You can even put in a caption if you want and choose a group. So we'll show you these groups in a second here. So we'll click on add. So now we have it here, and we have these tabs up here, groups, where you could create specific groups for certain shortcuts. So if you want to have like a work or a school or entertainment, you could do that by clicking on the plus here. Give it an icon, give it a name, and that's all there is to it. All right, so now that we have our new shortcut here, we could edit it. So if you want to change it or change the color scheme here, put your own logo. Add your own custom color, which is kind of off the page here. I'm recording at a low resolution, like so. And so when you click on it, it's going to open it in the same tab. And I don't think there's a setting for that. I haven't seen it. So what you would have to do is right-click on it, open a new tab if you want to do that. And you could also open it in incognito mode from here, edit it and delete it from here, just like you can from the two buttons here. All right, so now let's check out the settings because I don't really like this background. So you can turn off the search bar, choose your search engine. So let's go back to Google here. Amount of bookmarks in a row. And these are some settings in a different language, so you'd have to translate those to see what they are. So this is for add to bookmarks context menu item and show button to add bookmark and group. All right, then we have our background here. So you could pick a different background from theirs, a download one, add one from your computer. So let's say we're going to add a picture here. Let's say we wanted to use this one here. On save. And then we also have some import and export options if you want to do that. All right, so now we added our new picture. So now our background is different. And you can see we have our Google search box instead of the one that was set as default. All right, so that was the speed dial tool. So let's go on to the next one here. So we're going to remove this one here. All right, now we're going to try more than 10 shortcuts. So this looks more like the Google shortcuts than the other ones do. So we'll add it to Chrome. Here's the permissions. And then, of course, you could always get to the extensions from here as well, manage it, remove it, and so on. All right, let's try a new tab here. See, this automatically tells you that it's been changed and you have the option to change it back and if you do that it's going to get rid of the extension here. Alright so now you can see we have some built-in shortcuts here that we could edit and remove if we want to. So we don't want this. Alright then we want to add a new one. Do the same process. And you can see it took the icon from the website. So if we click on it, it's going to do the same thing where it opens in the same tab. 
So let's check out the settings here. So you can change the colors. If you want to have Gmail and image search at the top right, you can turn those on. Set a custom image for this as well. Let's pick the same one. All right, we'll save that. Now you can see we have our new background. Let's go back and see what else we could do here. Shrink it down a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. All right, so you can see those are our only options, so we don't have any uh, way to change the search engine here. All right, so let's just do a search here, for example, and see what search engine it's using. All right, so it's still using Google, so I haven't officially tested this, but if you're using a different search engine, you say it's Google as your default, I have a feeling it's going to use that search engine for the extension as well. So you shouldn't have to change it. If you click on image, it takes you right to Google Image Search. Gmail should take you right to Gmail. All right, so let's remove this one and go over the last one here. All right, so another speed dial. This is from a different developer, though, FVD. So let's add this to Chrome. So this one has some extra permissions you may not be super thrilled with, like read and change your browsing history. Let's see what it looks like, though. So it gives you a little start screen here, shows you what it does. All right, so you can see it's kind of similar, uh, except we have more of a TV screen type look. And then we have some options here. Turn it off if you don't want to use it. Uh, change it to preview or list. If you want to save some more room or get some more on the screen there. Number of columns. Set to auto. You can see you have similar groups here as well, like you did with the other one, and you can manage those. And then here we have most visited, recently closed, sync, and global options. So if you want to enable any of these uh, history items here, you could turn those on or off, block domains. And then this one has the option to open in a new tab. Let's go to the appearance too. You could change the dial size, opacity. Style, fancy to standard, number of columns again, most visited options, recently closed options, and here's where we could do the background. Let's do the same one here, apply the changes. All right, and here we have some font options if you want to change that. So these last couple here are just more of an advertisement here for their other extensions. All right, so now you can see it refreshed and we have our new background. All right, let's add one here. Even found it for us there, so we don't have to type it all in. You can change the name if you want. Pick a group. Auto preview. Manual preview. Custom preview. If you want to enter your own image, let's just do auto. Add the dial. All right, so one thing I've noticed about this one is sometimes it takes a while to actually load it here. But if I click on it, it still works. So you may or may not run into that. So when I tried it out the first time, it did this. Then I removed the extension, re-added it, it was fine. And now it seems to be doing it again. So you'll have to see how it works for you. Then you also have some right-click options to open a new tab, background tab, incognito mode, refresh, edit, delete. So if we refresh, for example, not doing anything. If we do that, it just gives you a generic icon there, which you would have to edit yourself, but it still works. All right, then here are your groups up here. The sponsored section I think you're stuck with because we're using the free one here. And if we click on Power Off, 
it'll just take you back to the settings for that particular extension. And you can shrink it up here if you want to get it out of the way. All right, so let's do a search here. All right, so this is using Yahoo. And I didn't see any way to change the settings for the search engine. So that's kind of a bummer. So out of the three, this is my least favorite. If I was going to use this type of extension here, I would just use the regular speed deal, not the FVD. But this one's more similar to the actual uh, Google configuration. So you might like this one better. All right, so I will put links in the description for all three of these. And then you could try them out and see if they work for you. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.